was I was going somewhere. I was on a plane. I was sitting there as people were coming in, and a woman was walking by, and she sees me, and she stops, and she, she you know, she's, she, oh my God, it, you know, it's you, it's the, the Dharma guy. I said, hey, she says, well, should I, should I get off the plane? Hey everybody, this is Captain Kyle, and I'm here with the immensely talented Francois Chow, who you might know from Lost, The Expanse, The Tick, G.I. Joe, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the U's. I could talk about what he's been in all day, and then we'd be out of time. So I'm not going to do that. But how are you doing today, Francois? I am doing great. Thanks. Uh, I'm here in L.A., and we've just, I hopefully, finished our heat wave that was here last week that just really, man, it killed us. But uh, I think we're, we're on our way back. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not a big fan of heat. Okay. So let's talk about your career and actually just a very general, what motivated you to get into acting? I, I guess I, got, I, was, I started getting a little interest uh, when I was uh, in high school, uh, which was, seems like uh, so, so very long ago. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I started doing, um, plays in high school and I thought oh this is uh this is kind of fun and uh I really never thought about the you know doing it as as a profession I went to college I started out as a business administration major like my parents wanted me to be like a banker or you know one of those things but uh I lasted about oh man must have been like about two weeks before I just I thought wow I'm going crazy this is this is insane I don't know what I'm doing so I, I, I stopped, then I, I started going to, I went to another school for, um, uh, in the drama department, uh, just to see, you know, if this is what I would want to do. And yeah, sure enough, this, I thought, oh, I, this is it. I think uh, hopefully I can, uh, you know, do something with this. <laughs> and uh, I, I got lucky. <laughs> well, and the luck has uh, expanded onto us because we have been lucky to watch you. What were your parents' reactions to you deciding to be, you know, an actor? Well, I think uh, uh, for my generation, mostly, I think it's pretty similar to a lot of uh, my friends who are the same age and uh, their parents, you know, they, they were not thrilled, uh, obviously. Um, but, you know, they, they uh, I think, you know, the, the, the thought was, oh, let him, let him give it a shot and then he'll come to his senses and, you know, if it doesn't work, once it doesn't work out, he'll, he'll, you know, we'll figure something out. So, uh, yeah, and luckily uh, it did work out. So once I started getting work and uh, making money, then, uh, you know, they thought, oh, okay, I guess it's okay. I guess you'll be all right. <laughs> well, that's good. Eventually they came around, but that, yeah. at least they weren't yeah. like, how dare you? You, you know, yeah. <laughs> there, there's been a few people who uh, their parents wouldn't talk to them for a while after they said, I want to be an actor. And they're like, mm. oh, wow. Yeah. You know, it, uh, you know it, it's, I think it's a, a like I said, it's kind of a generational thing, uh, you know, especially for me, uh, being an Asian American, I think uh, for my generation, most of us, you know, parents were, were you know, were not very keen on uh, any of us going into the arts. Uh, it was rare, but, uh, you know, they, things work out, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and I imagine that, you know, they, they saw the depictions in Hollywood of Asian Americans, yeah. and they weren't exactly the most flattering at the time. They, they have no, improved no. somewhat. But, um, it's, it's, it's getting there. Um, but one of your first roles was actually an Asian American in an animated sense in yeah. G.I. Joe. Yeah. Um, how did starting out with one of your first gigs being voice acting, how do you think that affected your career? Um, I, you know, I really don't know. I, I always, I've, I've been doing a, a, it's where I met you at one of these uh, Comic Cons. And um, uh, a lot of times, you know, they introduced me as, oh, there's Francois Chow, a voice actor, you know, from G.I. Joe and other things. And I thought, well, you know, I, 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 that's kind of a, I never thought of myself as that. And I, I still don't. Uh, it was kind of a fluke to get that job. Again, you know, my luck. And um, it, it really, you know, I, I, I'm amazed that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't get fired after the first couple of times because I, I, I had no idea what I was doing. 
you know, I got in there and I saw all these other amazing, like legendary voice actors at that time. And a bunch of them are still around uh, who do everything, who, who are, you know, you, if you ever watch any kind of cartoons or animated stuff, you, it's, 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 it's them. And um, it's like being thrown into the deep end of the pool. You know, you, I just kind of sat there and, and you know, deer uh, in the headlights kind of thing. And, and eventually I kind of picked up what I needed to do. And, and thank God I, I did. And uh, it was a great training ground. So, uh, but still, uh, I, these guys, boy, it's like any, any voice, any sound, anything uh, that you ask of them, they can do it. You know, hey, hey, can you, can you make the sound of a, you know, a, a squeaking, uh, you know, rocking chair for now? I'm like, <laughs> they do it. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, for me, I've done some uh, voice stuff. But, uh, I, you know, it's like, hey, if you, you need somebody that sounds, uh, that sounds like me, uh, I'm your guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, I have to say, looking at your uh, list of credits, I mean, you, you do some voice acting, but that is right. definitely not your focus. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, one, of, one of the fandom roles that people, of course, love you in is Shredder mm-hmm. in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. How did you get that role? Uh, it, again, you know, as an actor, the call went out for uh, the audition. I went down there, uh, you know, stood in line with a bunch of other guys that I, I know. We all know each other pretty much. <laughs> we went in, did the audition, and that was that. And then, uh, you know, uh, a little while later, they called and said, hey, you got the role. I thought, wow, uh, amazing. Uh, this is great. You know, so, uh, it's a job. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much what I, I, I felt at the time. I had seen the first movie, which I thought was, was great. Um, I had read the comic books way before that, and I was a, pretty much a fan of the, of the comic books. And I thought, wow, how are they going to make this into a, you know, I mean, at that time, the, the, there's no CGI, there's no, you know, none of that stuff. But they did a great, they did a great job. Those, those Jim Henson, uh, you know, costumes were amazing. Uh, so when I got the gig, I thought, wow, this is great. You know, uh, I didn't realize it, at that time it was pretty popular. I think it was popular then. Uh, after I had, <laughs> after I'd done it, I was, I was in, uh, so walking in, uh, I was in a grocery store here in LA one time and, you know, some kids were like, Oh, look, it's, it's, you know, it's the shredder. I'm like, wow, how do you even really recognize me? <laughs> But uh, it, it was like, wow, okay. It's kind of like an inkling of how, how popular it was then. Um, I had no idea that, what, 30 some 30 plus years later, it would still be such a big thing. Uh, you know, it's amazing. You never know what, 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 when you do stuff what, uh, what's going to happen. So, so did you recruit those kids to recognize you for the hand? Because you, uh, you have to form your <laughs> <Yeah>. own hand, right? <laughs> I had to ask their parents first, so... <laughs> Get permission slips. Yeah. So do you think now you are also a martial artist yes. and you, you teach karate. Mm-hmm. Uh, did that help? Do you think getting that role? You know, I was, uh, when I got the role, because I'd seen the first movie and there's a lot of uh, action and movements and stuff. And I was kind of jazzed. I thought, hey, this is going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, doing all this physical stuff. And, uh, we started the, the, the film and I, I realized, I guess the first movie uh, got a little pushback on how violent it was, especially for young kids, right? So they decided, I guess, that the second movie was going to be more of like, a, I don't know, like a Disney or Nickelodeon kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> where the where the, the, the action was a little more cartoony and it's very over the top. And, and my character, the shredder, uh, I, uh, all I did was stand around and order people around to <laughs> get those guys, get those turtles kind of thing. So, uh, there was really no, uh, no, no, uh, action. Uh, so that was a little disappointing, but Hey, you know, uh, it was still fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The pushback for the first movie, which I thought was unwarranted, but you know, I, I do have to ask. So you teach karate now. 
what, yes. what, what brought yes. that about? Well, I've been uh, training in martial arts, uh, I don't know, since uh, for the last, I started, I think, when I was about 12 or 13. And on and off, you know, I trained for a few years. And, of course, things, life gets in the way and you stop and you get back into it. And uh, I've been, I started training in uh, Taekwondo when I was young. Um, really, I love I loved martial arts. So uh, it's kind of a, you know, there comes a point where you go, well, this is, you know, it's like, oh, this is kind of a lifestyle. It's not like, oh, I got to go to the gym and you know, force myself to do stuff. So, um, and then now as, I, as I've gotten older uh, and a little creakier, uh, I've, I've done some other styles and now I'm, I teach uh, like a, I guess you could say it's um, traditional Okinawan karate, uh, which, which I've been doing for, uh, oh, geez, maybe the last uh, 10 or 12 years here in L.A. Um, and uh, yeah, it's great. It, it keeps it gets me, you know, I, if, I, if I wasn't doing it, I'd be sitting home with a remote, you know, clicking on Netflix or Amazon or whatever, just <laughs> I love TV. I love film. So that's what I would be doing. Well, that's awesome. And you have a great marketing, you know, get trained by shredder, you know, that's, yeah. <laughs> but, but do you find that also does, does that, you know, it may not have helped with TMNT too, um, but does martial arts help you get roles? Yeah. It, you know, um, of course, uh, you know, it used to be, of course, if you're an Asian American actor, it was like, oh, of course you do martial arts. You know, what else is there? You could either be a, a martial arts master, or you can play, a, you know, a, a drug lord, which I've done many times, and or you know, whatever else. But uh, yeah, it, it it helps. But you know what? I'm if it, to be to be honest, I'm pretty good. I'm okay, better than most. Maybe not as good as, as a lot of others. But there are a lot of stunt guys who are uh, like amazing. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. It's just you know, maybe it's in the genes or something. But man, yeah, I could never do the stuff they do. And so, a lot of times when I do a role that had, that calls for some martial arts or from you know some kind of stuff, uh, if it's like a tiny little thing, they'll let me do it. If not. They won't let me do it. So there's always a, a stuff guy that, that you know, kind of takes over, which, uh, which is great for the stuff <laughs> guys. I, 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 you know, I watch a lot of martial arts movies and, and, and TV shows. And I always, one of my pet peeves is that I can tell right away when the stunt guy takes over, <laughs> you know, you know, wait a minute, that's not him. Come on. And they switch back and go, okay. Uh, so I try to avoid that as much as possible, but, it's, a lot of it is out of my control. <laughs> well, plus they don't want, you know, an actor getting hurt doing yeah, something yeah, exactly. and not being able to work. Exactly. exactly. So. so so you talked about, you know, as an Asian at the, you know, in your early career, you were either a, a, a karate master or a drug. Mm -hmm. Has the quality right. and types of roles changed through the years? I mean, you haven't always played drug lords. I know you've played some. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it has, thankfully. Um, yeah, you know, I, when I started out, uh, I, I, I was, you know, uh, there's always the, uh, every episode, uh, thank God they don't do it anymore, but all the, the network shows, all these episodics, you know, all these uh, cop shows and stuff every season there's got to be like oh it's the chinatown episode <laughs> so of course there's, there's the, either you know the chinese tong gangs or this or that and uh i i started out when i was younger as one of the like one of the gang members right i was the guy in the leather jacket and then as i got more roles and as i got a little older i i guess i, I got promoted I, I became the boss and, and then I became the boss of the bosses, the guy in the, you know, in the Armani suit, uh, giving all the orders. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty, I mean, that, that was, that was sort of my bread and butter for a long time. And, um, uh, it, you know, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, you can think of it whatever way you want, but, uh, things, the, the rules have gotten a lot better, uh, especially now, uh, 
I see the younger generation uh, with with all these opportunities that it really, man, it's it just makes my heart, you know, jump because I, I, I there's so many um, shows now that have uh, Asians as a, as a, a regular, uh, you know, on these ensemble things, and it, there's just there's just uh, so many of them that I. I I'm glad. I'm so happy that I'm I'm still around to be to be able to see that that is happening now, and I hope it stays that way. Well, I I believe it will continue to progress. Yeah. Um, now nowadays, now when you were younger, obviously, and this is pretty much for most actors starting out, you can't really pick and choose your roles all that much. No. It's like you, you need to make money. You know, you take the role. Right. You are a right. gang member number seventeen. You know, but exactly. But nowadays, you have, you know, a great resume behind you. Um, do you look for particular roles, you know, when choosing a project to be part of? People ask me that question uh, a lot. Like, oh, how did you choose this, uh, you know, to do, to do this part? Or how did you, did you? And I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, uh, I've been doing this for God, almost like around 40 years. And uh, I, I guess I would be considered, a, I don't know, a, a journeyman actor because I have a lot of credits. A lot of casting people know me. A lot of producers, directors know who I am. So they know my work. Uh, but still, it's not like, oh, you know, people are sending me scripts to go, hey, do this or this. And then I, get, I can sit here and read them and go, oh, I choose this one. Or I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let me, this looks like interesting. Let me, I'll, I'll choose this role. Maybe I can, no, I, at least for me, it's still, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I get an audition notice. I put myself on tape. I send it out. And uh, once in a while, uh, they'll, they'll offer me a job. And uh, that's that. Um, if I'm, and I've been very lucky to be, have gotten, you know, the kind of work I have recently, but uh, it's still, you know, you audition and you hope for the best and, Sometimes you get it. Uh, most of the times you don't, and you just you kind of go on. It's just it takes it. It's taken me this long <laughs> to think. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't get that one, but you know, I'll get the next one or the one after that. Uh, in that mentality, that kind of helps keeps you going because uh, a lot of us, we you know, we don't get the job, and we're like, oh my god, you know, oh what did I do wrong? I'm a, a terrible actor. I, I'm never gonna. Work, I'm never gonna work again. Blah blah blah. <laughs> you put yourself through that every time. So it's still hard not to do that. So are you still doing a lot of auditions or are there times when they just call you up and say, Hey, they've got a role with you in mind. Do you get those type of yeah. offers? I, I would oh, hope. Yeah. Once in a, once in a while, it's really great. I mean, I still do mostly auditions and once in a while, my agent will call and say, Hey, they, they want to offer you this part and, you know, and this thing, blah, 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 and they gave me the whole spiel. And I said, Hey, you know, it's, that signed that contract before they changed their minds <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> well, moving to a role where you weren't a gang member or drug lord, um, you were on Lost, and a, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the majority of it, you were creating Dharma initiative videos and stuff. Right. Um, right. And I don't know how much interaction you had with the rest of the cat. What was your experience in that show like? It, it, it was, you know, you know, kind of uh, one of those lucky enough to be in a kind of a life changing, you know, show. Right. Uh, I, I auditioned again. I auditioned for the, the part. Uh, the audition was like this two page monologue. Um, and I usually I like to memorize everything, you know, when I go into audition. So um, I spent like, you know the whole night memorizing the whole thing. And I go in the next day and I do the audition and I do it all in one, you know, one take, which was pretty much, that was it. That I couldn't do, I couldn't have done another one. <laughs> uh, and I thought, oh man, that's it. I still think they probably cast me because I could memorize all of that <laughs> in that short period of time. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was supposed to be, I think, you know, I heard somewhere that it was supposed to be like just a one shot deal where they said, oh, they find this, this little film of you know of this guy doing this sort of very dry uh, you know instructional tapes kind of thing. So 
great. You know, I got a part in a, in a amazing hit show. I thought, oh, okay, it's great. I did it. We, uh, we filmed it. I thought, uh, they, they were shooting in, in Hawaii, right? So I thought, oh, yay, hey, Hawaii. <laughs> all right, here I come. Uh, so they called and said, hey, here's your call time. You're going to be going to, uh, Warner Brothers over in Burbank. <laughs> so I said, well, wait a minute, what? <laughs> I said, uh, at this time. Uh, uh, so it turns out we shot it on the stage in, in, in Burbank on the stage, one of the stages of uh, the show that was going on then, uh, Alias, right? Okay. <laughs> Alias, the, when they wrapped for the day, we, we came in and we shot this first, you know, Dharma Initiative orientation video. <laughs> and that was it you know it was like a couple hours uh but still i thought hey great got paid when it plays i get some residuals blah 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 it's, it's you know and then uh like a no- month later they, they called and said hey they want to do another one I said okay that's that's fine uh, we did another one and it it kept going you know a little while later they said hey they wanted you know or they pin you for this date uh, and then finally, it was like, oh, here we go, Hawaii. <laughs> so I get to Hawaii. It's great. Uh, you know. Um, and so the first three, uh, I don't know, three seasons or so, I went to Hawaii, but it was just me. I went there. I, I would like fly there on a Monday. I go to the, the studio uh, on a Tuesday, did my little orientation video and uh, Wednesday, I flew home. <laughs> I didn't see anybody. I didn't meet anybody. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, it's funny because a lot of fans ask me, oh, how was it to work with, you know, uh, Evangeline and all, uh, Jorge and all these other guys? Are they nice? And I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you when I find out. <laughs> uh, and so I didn't get to meet anyone until I think like the fourth or fifth season when they, they started having had the character in the flashback where it wasn't just on the video. And, uh, but once I did, though, it was great. It, it, was, it, was, it was amazing to, to work with all those people. Well, you got there eventually. Yes, I, I did. I did. I, I do have to ask, Lost Untangled and the mm-hmm. Puppet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were your thoughts like, on hey, seeing this? I was like, oh, hey, can I keep him? They say, yeah, if you pay me like $15,000, you can take him home with you. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, that was kind of fun. I guess, uh, you know what, those, those little lost, untangled things really kind of help because, man, you watch, especially the, back, the, back in the day, you know, a weekly thing, right? You watch the episode and you wait till next week to see the next episode. But in the meantime, uh, for me anyway, I'm still like, oh, wait, I don't remember what happened or wow, you know, what's going on? I, I need that, that, you know, that lost, untangled explanation as to <laughs> the <laughs> recap. Uh, so that, that was a lot of fun doing, doing those things. $15,000 for that puppet, though. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's like, whoa. Yeah. But so what was it like to see yourself in felt? It, it was, it was, uh, it was strange because, of course, I was, it was like I was talking to the puppet and the puppeteers, you know, it's right right there next to me, kind of sitting on the ground, uh, t- talking. And um, it took a little getting used to. <laughs> well, it looks like a lot of fun. It's a shame that uh, the, the puppet was a little too expensive to take home. Yeah. For, like... <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, you know, I wonder where it is now. I was you know, like, hey, uh, yeah, all these shows that you, that I, you know, like, like Turtles and, and Lost and stuff, of course, I, 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 actually, it's me. I don't think of, oh, oh, maybe this is a good souvenir to keep. I should, you know, kind of try to kind of take it or stuff. And I'm like, well, okay, whatever. And I, I don't take anything. And of course, years later, I'm like, ah, I should have at least tried to get something. <laughs> yeah, I, that was actually, I was going to ask, you know, you, you got it. You've had all these great roles and all these different yeah. things. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't think of that, that stuff. And uh, I should. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the very least, it's emergency money. You can even screen use Shredder helmet, you know? Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I, I know that the characters that you play, um, you usually have some kind of mystery to them. Even in like The Tick, you were Walter, mm-hmm. former mm-hmm. Aegis agent. There what, you go. What, yeah. What was, oh. what was The Tick like? That 
without a doubt, playing Walter in the Tick is my all-time favorite thing that I have ever done. Oh. Uh, I, I was in heaven. I, I was like, man, I've been waiting 40 years for this role to come along. And, <laughs> and uh, thank God. Uh, because, you know, up to then, of course, is, uh, I mean, like I play a lot of bad guys. I play this, you know, it's all, it's all a lot of, you know, you know, kill those guys, get those guys, kind of, kind of thing. And Walter is just, he started out as just sort of this just kind of boring, nerdy, nice guy, who just is just happy to, to, to be around the tick. And uh, I was like, oh, man, this is it. That's me. Uh, it's basically me. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it it was like, there's no effort. In it. It, it fit me like a glove. And, um, and then to find out, you know, his story as, as we go along, that it's like, oh, man, this is going to be great. Uh, well, we, we could have, well, oh, man, if we had gotten that third season, it would have been, uh, mm, it would yeah, have been something. It, it's a shame. Yeah. Amazon was very Fox-like in that, cutting that off too early. Well, yeah, I think there was a lot of politics and a lot of, you know, who knows what the, why, Certain. I mean, we were. You check on those Amazon ratings, and The Tick was the only show with a five star rating. Like of all those hits that they had at that time, the only one. And I'm like, wow. I guess that they don't they don't go by that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really weird. I don't know if it was viewership or right. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how they, what they calculated was. You know, it's probably like oh, whatever. We don't make we make more money with this than that. You know, unfortunately, bad. really good shows have been canceled because the studio wasn't making as much money as they wanted to from the show. Well, I, I mean, you can take it as far as this whole I, this Batgirl thing, right? I'm like, well, what? Are you yeah. How, how can it possibly help you? How can you? I guess it does. How can you possibly make more money by just dropping the whole thing and you just spent like $10 million or whatever? more than that to, to make the movie and you go, Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a mystery. I, yeah. uh, I have no idea what they're, what they're thinking, but speaking of, you know, hit shows the expanse. Um, hey, yeah. And your character in there was rather complex, very, Cold, a little bit more towards, you know, the bad guy stuff that you played before, yeah, but yeah. had his moments that, you know, you could kind of see the humanity. Um, yeah, he was, he was so close to almost redeeming himself, but <laughs> uh, it, it was, you know, it was great to do because I was shooting the Expanse at the same time I was shooting the Tick. So I would go to Toronto, be... Jules Pierre Mao on the expanse and be this just horrible person and then go to New York and be Walter on the tick and be like, Oh my God, what a relief, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, opposite sides of the, of the coin kind of thing. So yeah, it, it was, it was, uh, it was great. So it was like therapy. <laughs> yeah. For <you>. Yeah. <laughs> so with the expanse, any interesting experiences, you know, Shooting on that set, I mean, they had some beautiful sets on uh, there. Yeah, no, it was, uh, you know, uh, you could tell they, they put a lot of thought and a lot of money and just the, uh, the, whole, the whole experience was, was great. The actors uh, working with, uh, in the first season, I worked there a lot with uh, actors of Shorty, Shorty and Ashley, who played... Uh, Christian Alasrala, um, uh, with that amazing voice of hers, <laughs> and it was just uh, it was a it was a pleasure just to you know to, to do stuff on the scene with her. I really man the first the first time we we worked together uh, for for those of you who don't know the, the way we usually on, on for TV and stuff you you come to the set um, <clears throat> they call you for rehearsal you go in. You uh, play the scene, um, you know, for the director, for the camera people, to see, you know, to figure out what to do. And then uh, they light it and they do all that setup, and then you come back and then shoot it. So when you went to rehearse, most of us, they give us these, uh, we call sides, these little uh, 
miniature scripts of the scene of the lines for the scene of that day because there's a lot of lines to to memorize you know a lot of actors that can't they don't have we don't have photographic memories where we can just you know memorize everything so we we hold them in our hands most of us know all the lines already but security blanket kind of thing we hold them in our hands and we read through the scenes and stuff so we go in we rehearse for the rehearsal i got my size the other actor is his side and um Chore comes in, she has nothing. I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, we, we do the scene, we rehearse the scene, and she is word perfect. Um, and I'm like, wow. Uh, I <laughs> took my size and I was like, I, I, I better hide these because <laughs> it's very, very intimidating. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of, you know, the, the caliber that, that uh, you get to work with on that show. So, um, yeah, it, it's it, a lot of a lot of good stuff there. That, uh, well, I can't say that I knew the entire process, but that that's really impressive. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know. It's, it's uh, yeah. You're like, whoa. And knowing your lines, you know, for a series, especially a movie, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of times because there's a lot of a lot of dialogue. It depends on the on the production, right? Some productions, some writers. I mean, they they want you to just hit every syllable. Or, you know, if you miss an A or a Z or something, then oh, uh, forget it. And other productions are a little more uh, lenient. You, you know, you, you know, you, don't, you can't just say whatever you want, but you can, you know, uh, get the go gist. off a little bit. Yeah, uh, so. It depends, you know, it depends on the production. Speaking of which, has there been a, a favorite line that on some of the less um, exacting um, productions that you've been with, where you improv a line that was better or kind of, you know, kind um, of made the, the scene a little bit better? That's a favorite? <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm not, not, I, you know, first of all, when you say improv, you know, well, or, or just come up with an alternate way of saying things. Right, right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not good at that. I, I, I depend like a hundred percent on the writer to give me, to tell me what to say. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I rarely, unless it, unless my, when my, I go blank or something, I rarely go off script. Uh, so I don't really have, you know, I don't really go off on. on. I did. What is that movie I did was. Uh, uh, called uh, 21 and Over, uh, which is like uh, 10, over 10 years ago, uh, with uh, <clears throat> he's, he's a huge star now, Miles Teller and uh, uh, Skylar Aston and uh, Justin John uh, played my son. I was sort of the, the mean, stern dad. This was sort of a college, uh, you know, animal house kind of movie right uh but there, there, there was a coming scene. of age you know yeah 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 comedy yeah and i was like you know the, the the stern mean father who expected his kid to do you know be whatever and there's a scene where i'm in the car driving and uh you know somebody comes in front of me or something or a car stops and i i start you know going hey what the hell are you doing you know cursing at him and stuff like that and um so <laughs> We're driving, and the director is like, uh, you know, in the in the, the the car behind me with the sound guy, and and he says, "Oh, just you know, just keep keep saying stuff, keep doing stuff, keep saying whatever you you know, whatever comes to your mind." I'm like, "Oh, Christ!" So we're going, and I'm, I start going, "Oh, you know, I got damn it, you, hey, hey, what you looking at me? You fuck you!" And I, start, I, start, I can't even remember what I said. <laughs> but they, they were like, afterwards, they were like, "Oh, man." We we couldn't get most of it because the 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 director and the sound guy were laughing so hard that they they, they couldn't they, they started moving the stuff and we couldn't get the sound. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, that, that was the extent of my uh, I would say if I can remember of my my improv that uh, I don't even know if it made it into the movie. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, you you do an amazing job improving lines that you do too good of a job so and they can't yeah, catch yeah, it. <laughs> yeah there you go uh, i'll take that <laughs> that's what we're gonna go with yeah now 
you've had a lot of guest spots on a lot of shows. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, the list is very long. I, you're a working actor, and yeah. you know that that's what you do. Are there any particular guest spots that stand out that were like really like great experiences? Uh, yeah, you know, I've, I keep telling people, boy, if you watched, been watching TV in the last like about thirty years, sooner or later, you're going to be going, oh hey, there's that guy, I know him. <laughs> That's him, right? There he is. Yeah. Oh, the, what's his name? Yeah, that guy. Uh, it's a lost dude. You know, <laughs> right, right. The doctor or whatever. The Dharma guy. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll show up. And, and yeah, a, a lot of a lot of uh, guest star spots in, in episodics. I would say the memorable one would be I finally, this was uh, like seven years ago. I finally did a guest spot on the the, the rebooted to sort of I guess you could call that uh, X Files. Okay. And uh, I I have to confess, and I hope she's not watching, but I'm a huge Gillian Anderson fan. I have a huge crush on it. Right. So finally, I got. Oh my god, I got to do work, uh, work on the X Files. Oh man, already my you know, my hands started sweating. <laughs> and I, I look at the script and I go, Oh my god. My scenes are all my scenes are with her. It's just her and she and I. I'm like, oh my god! Uh, so <laughs> I go, I show up on the set, and I'm already. This is this is. I, I'm usually very calm. I'm very cool. It doesn't matter who I work with. Uh, but this is one time where I'm like, in, you know, I'm like, oh my god! Uh, I hope I don't, you know, screw this up. And uh, so yeah, that was. Uh, it was great. Uh, she was amazing, and. Uh, um, I, I don't know what else to say. It was just a great experience. experience. And, uh, and it, it, it being the X-File, it turns out I was her son. <laughs> My character was her son. Uh, so and Good thing it was a love scene. Go, go watch that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go watch that episode and you figure it out. <laughs> that was called Ghoulie. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ghoulie. Yeah. Well, well, it's cool that, you know, I mean, we get to go to conventions and fanboy over you, but it's nice to know that occasionally you have a fanboy moment meeting. Oh, you know. Yeah. 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 No, it's, 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 it's funny. I, I, I go to these conventions and uh, a lot of times, a few times where there are, you know, actors who or actresses who are at the same convention that, uh, and, and most of the times they're a little, I don't know, I wouldn't say older, but, uh, I I would just be like total fanboy going, oh my God, it's it's you know, it's Edward James almost. How should I go there and say hi or should I well, <laughs> that kind of stuff? Uh, actors who I, I know their work who are you know amazing. Only usually only I know who they are, uh, basically from a lot of stuff. Uh, and I get excited about it. And I tell people and they go, oh, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. The Edward James almost is the one who said that uh, when he decided to get into acting, his father wouldn't talk to him for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was the one I was referring to. So we come yeah. full circle. Oh. There you go. So since you've been to a lot of fan conventions, um, any experience with a fan that stands out? Um, not with any, I'm trying to think, not any particular one, but uh, I, I, th- I started doing these conventions. Uh, I guess for the last you know, two or three years. And before that, uh, the first one I had done was a sort of a lost uh, theme thing. And I was very nervous about doing this kind of stuff because I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I was like, oh, uh, you know, what's, what's, uh, I, I had visions of, uh, I'm trying to remember the movie where, uh, it was called, uh, the wrestler, have you ever seen that with Mickey Rourke? He's like this old washed up wrestler. And then there's a scene where he, he goes to, I guess it's a, it's a signing convention and he's just, he's sitting there by himself and there's just like a few stragglers walking by and it's just, you know, it's like, that's the, the, the image I had in mind of me sitting at the table. <laughs> Everyone nobody, else is lying in right, your. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's like, uh, Hey, who's, you know, who's that? Uh, so it was very, uh, you know, I, I surely didn't want that. But um, after doing them for the last few years, uh, I've done a bunch. Uh, it really is amazing. Uh, the best thing 
thing about it is uh, it sounds kind of you know trite, but it's it's meeting the fans because they are so happy to see you. It, it really, it, I'm like, wow. Uh, that's the only way I can think of it now. Is that man, if I can, you know, make this person so happy to to be here, it's great. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever. I can be sitting here for hours without anybody coming by, but the person that comes by is so happy to to, to be there that you just go, okay, okay. Uh, you know, it, it really is. It's a it's a weird feeling, but uh, it, it's wonderful. Well, we're glad you're coming to these shows, and you know that's where I got to meet you. Yeah, and I've always admired your work, and I'm like, he's kind of underrated, you know, especially <laughs> seeing you, you know, kind of the backbone, you know, the underpinnings of Lost. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like this is the guy. Without him, none of this, you know, <laughs> would be <laughs> oh, happening. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know that uh, you were shooting recently um, on a show, and. And you're a working actor. Anything coming out that you can let us know about so we can see you again? Yeah. Uh, Okay. So let's see. Uh, As I told you earlier before we started recording, uh, I I have a, I did a uh, three, no, geez, two or three episodes of uh, a show called Barry, uh, which is on HBO. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is uh, season number four, I think it might be the last season. Um, been working on that uh, this last uh, couple months. Uh, before that, let's see. I'm trying to think, my 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 wife and all my people always saying, "You gotta plug yourself. Tell them what you're doing. What, you know, put yourself out there." I'm like, "Oh, okay, whatever." <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I oh, I think it's on Showtime. There's this there's this series now called uh, American Gigolo. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is based on the film from the, the Richard Gere from the 90s. Uh, that's out now. I, I have, I think, three or four episodes uh, recurring on that. I, I play uh, like a the super the detective. Uh, Don Clyburn? The, 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 bo- the boss, yeah, that's it. The boss <laughs> detective. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, Rosie O'Donnell's boss in, in the show. Um, what else? Uh, there's a on Hulu. There's something called Wedding Season, just dropped. I think uh, I play uh, uh, a gangster dad. <laughs> <laughs> Back to being bad guys. <laughs> uh, you know, it's amazing. Uh, a lot of gangster, but lately, as I get older, I play a lot of dads. So when they can combine the two, it's great for them. Right? <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I played a gangster dad, and uh, I've been doing guest spots on a bunch of these um, uh, shows on on, on network uh, like uh, The Good Doctor or, or Chicago Med, and uh, I'm I'm the father <laughs> in those. <laughs> uh, I, I tell uh, Asian American actors, younger actors I meet, that um, you know you got to watch out because. Sooner or later, I'm going to be your father. It's one of these things. So get ready. <laughs> uh, and uh, what, oh, and uh, I think I can say it, but I was working on um, there's a live action um, of uh, the of Avatar: The Last Airbender series coming mm-hmm. uh, coming soon. Uh, and uh, I, I did a few episodes on that, which is coming out. Very cool. Um, yeah, and I see adults only has been announced. That's a TV series. Adults only. Hmm. Are you sure that's me? Because <laughs> it's on your IMDb, which hmm. you know. Yeah, no, I know what that is. <laughs> I have no idea. What you're that is. Char- you're the voice of Charles Chang, so I don't know if it might be animated. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay, that, that was that was a few years ago, a couple of years ago. It's just finally it, coming out now. That d- right, that happens the, where yeah, especially with animation, if it takes a long time to animate. Right, so. right, right. You're just working so much; it's hard to keep track, isn't it? <laughs> oh boy, I wish. Uh, you know, it's always uh, actors were always very insecure about. You know, we could be working like every day of the week, and we'd still think, "Oh my god, 
I'll never work again after this project, or when am I going to work again, kind of thing. So it's it's, it's sort of an norm. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think a lot of people think, oh, I want to be an actor, and you know, I'll have a huge mansion and fancy cars, and don't have to worry about anything. And it's like, well, you're also being an independent contractor, so you're always looking yeah. for your next job. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, sure, if you you know, you can be uh, an A list star, I guess, and make millions of dollars and not worry too much about it, even though, you know, that's, you make millions of dollars, you have to spend a lot of it <laughs> on stuff. So, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, like I said, it's, I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to, you know, when you're young and you're in school or you're starting out and people ask you, well, what, what, what do you, you know, what do you, what do you hope to, to do? Do you want to be a, are you going to be a star? Are you going to be a, you know, whatever. And most of us, we, we say, oh, we just want to be a, a working actor, making a, a living, doing what we love, um, which is uh, basically what I've been lucky enough to have been doing, uh, working in the profession that uh, I love to do and uh, making enough money to, to, you know, be pretty comfortable and not worry about too much stuff, you know, but uh, fingers crossed. And <laughs> Well, I, I hope you remain a working actor for many, many years to come. And, Thank you. You know, you can always, you know, fall back on teaching karate. Well, yeah, this is, as the, the body gets older, it gets a little, you know, harder to. I used to watch martial arts when I was younger. Like I said, I, I trained in Taekwondo, which was uh, is a lot of uh, kicks and high kicks and you know stuff like that. And in my in my mind, I can still do them all with great <laughs> accuracy, but uh, in reality, <laughs> it's just the body is just not cooperating. So, uh, the, the, the older you get, the you know things get a little less, less, a little more creaky. So to say. Well, that's why TMNT two was such great training because now you yeah. can just be like Shredder and yeah. tell people what to do and not have to. There do you it. go. There you go. <laughs> Well, Francois, this has been awesome. Um, thank you so much for spending uh, time with us. Is there anything you want to say to your fans out there before we uh, end? Oh, geez. Uh, no, no, really. Uh, thanks for watching stuff. And, uh, you know, like I say, keep watching. You'll, you'll see me pop up here and there. And um, you can say, hey, I, I know who that guy is, sort of. <laughs> he looks familiar. He's, he's that guy. He's that guy. Yeah, he looks familiar. I do, a lot of, you know, this, I do get a lot of, hey, did I go to high school with you? <laughs> or do I, do I know you from somewhere? Uh, it, it's, it's funny, you know, it's funny getting recognized, uh, especially from uh, uh, years when, when, when Lost was uh, in its heyday, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, was, I was going somewhere. I was on a plane. I was sitting there as people were coming in. And a woman was walking by and she sees me and she stops and she, she you know, she's, she, oh, my God, it, you know. It's you. It's the, the Dharma guy. I said, hey, how are you? She says, well, should, she, and she was like, oh, I, should, I, should I get off the plane? I don't know if I should be on this plane. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been said, like, no, go, get out. I said, uh, oh, no. I said oh, yeah. now remember, I wasn't on the plane. I was, I was not one of the guys, so you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm on the plane, you know it's safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's other people you got to worry about. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, for spending this time. Um, wishing you continued success, and uh, everyone who who tuned in and watched, thank you so much for uh, for watching. And as always, have fun and follow your fan. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, this is Maisie richardson Sellers, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be a legend and hit that like button, and most importantly, have fun and follow your fandom.